work. You can see this is uh, one of our farms. This is a garbage farm, a Sukumawiki farm. We have a spinach farm. The incentives they have introduced, uh, they have hired uh, casuals as a pilot project from the uh, grassroots. They train them how to to, to, uh, to do uh, this kind of farming. We've seen there, we, we harvest our own uh, water. There's an irrigation system which we normally use. So we want uh, this particular initiative to be implemented in all our uh, sub-counties, all our machinery wards. The importance of mechanization in the sustainability of agriculture cannot be underestimated. It has to cater to both the large and small scale farmers across the divide. What machinery innovations did exhibitors bring to the farmers today? I'm here to exhibit my machines, especially the ones for dairy farming and for agriculture. That is the shaft cutters, the spin choppers, we have the water pumps for, for, for farming, and we have the mess shearers for farming. I'm promoting trade and agriculture by producing machines which, which, which are more convenient to agriculture and dairy farming and they, are, and they are affordable to our farmers. Right now we are at the Jaquat stand at Nairobi International Show and we have here Mr. David Chitai who's going to show us how this works. Mr. David? Yes. Habariyako? Muzuri sana. Sasa naona ukona juice hapa? Yeah, the, this juice uh, is very important to us because we want to solve the problem the farmers have. Mm -hmm. that farmers have a challenge with fruits. Mm -hmm. What to do with the fruits when they start harvesting? Because we have them in oversupply, like tomatoes, mangoes, oranges. But with this machine, we can be able to process this into pulp, which is easier to handle. We can be able to package, we get the pulp, we get the, the juice, we can also be, get the sauce and the jam from the same product. Other than when they have these, which has low value, and the other they carry to the market. Once we get to the market, we only consume some part of this, but what remains is a waste for us. So that waste, we don't want it to go to the towns. We want to manage the, the waste in the farm, and then we retain the best so that we can sell the best at a bigger value. So this is what we are doing. And these are tomato we want to process like so that we can get tomato sauce or tomato paste or tomato jam so that we can use it in our, we can package it for the mm -hmm. supermarket, we can use it for ready to, to take, mm -hmm. we can be able to use it for uh, during uh, offshore weddings when we want to do the, the weddings and uh, we realize when we are doing the weddings people carry the outside catering. Yes. They carry a lot of buckets of uh, trays of tomatoes, mm -hmm. so you can only ca carry two buckets mm. of uh, processed uh, uh, pan. Mm -hmm. And I want just to show you what happens. Mm -hmm. When we put these tomatoes here, mm -hmm. they are crushed. Mm -hmm. So the waste that we do not want mm -hmm. comes out mm -hmm. as waste on the other side, mm -hmm. and it comes out with very minimum moisture or the juice. Mm -hmm. So we retain it on the farm, we can mm -hmm. use it as animal feed. Mm -hmm. But now what we get, mm -hmm. we can process it further, we can uh, store it as a, as a, 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 just as it is, as a pulp, mm -hmm. or we can process it further now into what we are packaged mm -hmm. and use it as, a, as an end product mm -hmm. for, for the shops, depending on the shelf life that we have given it uh, mm -hmm. by, by virtue of our preservation. Mm -hmm. So we can process one, mm -hmm. tomatoes, which is a vegetable, we can process pineapples, mm -hmm. we can process guavas, mm -hmm. which people are now taking the guava juice. Yes. We can process the pineapple, wow. the mangoes. And uh, if you go to Makweni, mm -hmm. Makweni, they are a good example of now processing mangoes. Uh, Hola, they are processing mangoes. Uh, that's in Tana River. Mm -hmm. uh, in Maku uh, that's Machacos in Mwala, they are processing mangoes and oranges. Mm -hmm. In Tarakaniti, they are processing mangoes and uh, and the pineapples and all the fruits from there so that we don't take what can add value mm -hmm. and then we get we give the to the say to the the middlemen because mm -hmm. middlemen buy this at a very low price in the farm yes and then they go and sell very expensively or the process mm -hmm. which we could otherwise do and get maximum profit out of this so you're saying you can juice fruits yes. and vegetables and what vegetables. about sugar cane Sugar cane, we need crushing. Mm -hmm. We need crushing. But we have also tubers that we process. Mm -hmm. 
like beetroot, we can process and, and carrots, but we must also uh, grate them mm -hmm. so that we can get beetroot juice mm -hmm. and carrot juice. Okay. Yes. But now the of interest is mm -hmm. we can be able to blend uh, the very many fruits that we want to blend. Yes. We can blend pineapple with mango, mm -hmm. passion fruit with mango, mm -hmm. we can blend uh, oranges with the lemon and mm -hmm. uh, pineapple. Mm -hmm. So we can be able to blend using this machine with a lot of ease. Okay. Yes. So let's show us how it's done. So once we clean, once we clean our products, mm -hmm. they are clean and they are ready to. They, they, you see, like they are ripe. Yes. So we clean them. We put them. Uh, if they are in big volumes, we shall be we shall be doing it in big volumes. Mm -hmm. But this is just for demonstration. We realize that once we put them there and we start the machine, you will be able to see them. You will be able to see them. Once they start running, you'll be able to see them ripping. It's all that. Right. So they start falling like right? So that's how they drip. David is just one of the innovators. They help with transpiration cooling. In the lineup of exhibitions, we come across other innovations such as this man who's invented a cooler that requires no use of solar energy or power. It uses the principle of evaporation and transpiration to cool. So farmers can use that to, to store vegetables and they can be kept fresh for about seven days without going bad. We were targeting small scale farmers who want to cut costs on their electricity bills and also those who are not able to access areas where electricity is, is not available. I understand there's the, the, the concept of using solar power, but still the initial cost of setting up a, a solar system, it, it, it's expensive. So using the cooler that we've brought here, it will help the farmers to at least reduce on the post-harvest losses. The cooler that we, we have is different from the ones that are there because you find the ones that are, are available mostly in urban areas are the fridges that we have. Uh, for those ones you need electricity uh, and the cost, uh, there's operational cost for the, the fridges is kind of expensive. The initial one that was being used was the charcoal cooler, but you find with time the charcoal, cooler, uh, the charcoal be, uh, crumbles so, and it becomes a little bit messy. So the pumice is actually much better for, use, for usage than the charcoal cooler. And also the fridge because of the cost. Yeah. And plus we are also trying to conserve the, our environment uh, and also conserve our forests. So someone doesn't need to go cut the trees so as to set up the, 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 the cooler. We are really trying to make it local so that uh, even those small scale farmers can still afford it. And if they want it on large scale, they can maybe, uh, there's an initiative where we have the farmers partnering groups, uh, maybe of 10, 10 and uh, contribute so that they can be able to afford it. And also maybe the county governments or any other investor that uh, will be interested uh, or uh, stakeholder that might be interested on the same, uh, can set it up and then maybe lease it out to the farmers and use. Because at the end of the day, what you're targeting is food security in our country. The machinery is simply mind-blowing. So we have the tank, which we use to soak uh, the, our whole system with water. As you can see, it's, it's dripping. Then from there, we have, we have plants on top. You can either use, uh, they, they help with transpiration cooling. So you can use valuable plants like spinach, tomatoes, melons, as I have. So I'm using this as my uh, seedling as my nursery and then uh, there's the inside now as you can see i've stored uh, some uh, fruits i have tomatoes yogurts a few uh, juices and vegetables like spinach and skumawiki what about a way to add value to what is considered waste every day 15 tons of rice husks are produced in Moya. these husks are either dumped or burned which greatly affects the environment but what if there was a way to turn waste into profit? Let's meet Kongo, a man who has found an alternative for rice farmers. Yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes, yes uh, uh, what we have done is uh, we have developed the technology for, for converting the rice husk waste, uh, which 
farmers normally burn it in Mwea, in Ahero, and in Busia, in, and uh, in other rice growing areas, into valuable industrial chemicals. And uh, uh, what, we, uh, what we have developed is a simple micro industries uh, to do that. And uh, the first, uh, the f uh, the first uh, step uh, doing this is burning the rice husk. Once we if we burn the rice husk in the absence of air, uh, we can develop something called activated carbon, uh, which is a valuable resource uh, used in um, used in uh, purifying water and in purifying raw sewage. And uh, we, uh, if we burn the rice husk uh, even further, uh, we'll get something like this, uh, which we can add a few chemicals which are available at uh, local, uh, the local market uh, places uh, to, uh, uh, to make what we call, what is called sodium silicate solution. Sodium silicate has wide applications in detergent making industry. It is used uh, widely, it's a key component of detergents. And uh, from also, uh, uh, from also uh, sodium silicate, we can make uh, silica gel. Silica gel is uh, those uh, small packets that you find when you buy your shoes, uh, the, the ones that observe uh, moisture and uh, keep your shoe in good condition. Also, you can also, you'll also find it in electronic uh, equipment. If you buy a new TV, uh, you'll find those packets also inside the new TV. Uh, this chemical, uh, this chemical is uh, very valuable. Um, currently, in industry, uh, in uh, the uh, industrial area, it's going for around 580 per kilo, uh, which is much more than uh, even the price of rice. Mm -hmm. So uh, we 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 are we are we are getting something even more valuable from the waste than even from the uh, from rice itself. And um, we are hoping this will change. Uh, this will change the economies of our rice uh, growing areas, uh, it will provide employment, mm -hmm. it will clean up the environment mm -hmm. and uh, we should see no more of this burning, uh, this burning of uh, rice husks in the open and all that smoke in the open and uh, that's uh, the main thing that we are, we are trying to do. Good seeds make a happy farmer. Producing high quality seeds of various crop varieties and increasing access to smallholder farmers and educating them about the benefits is crucial to achieving food security. What do the seed exhibitors have for farmers? Right now we are at the demonstration plots at the ASK Nairobi showground and we'll be talking to Lawrence of East African Seed Company to tell us what they're exhibiting, what farmers can learn from them and how they are promoting innovation and trade in agriculture. Let's go meet him. East African Seed Company is a private company uh, dealing with agricultural related products. We have uh, uh, vegetable seeds, which are hybrids and as well as also uh, open pollinated uh, uh, seeds. We also deal with uh, maize. Uh, we have a blanche which deals with maize but, uh, hybrids, both for low altitude, medium altitude, and also high altitude. We also have another subsidiary company known called Angliscope, which deals with the agrochemicals for protecting crops against the pests and the diseases so that we have farmers producing quality. So why are you exhibiting today at the ASK Nairobi show? We are exhibiting because uh, we want to show the farmers as the technologies are changing very fast. Eh? Also in the seed industry, the agrochemical industry, those technologies are also there. So we liaising with our multinationals who supply us with the very superior seeds uh, and also with our local uh, research and department. Eh? We are, want to show the farmers the, uh, the, those technologies which we are producing. As you know of late, eh? the population is increasing at a very high rate. The land sizes are decreasing and the, we need to feed the nation. So we have to show the farmers from the, what they can grow from this, what they, to, for them to get the highest from the small units they are doing currently, and also to be able to, uh, to be able to, we are advising on them how they can be able now to produce very high quality the crops which are required maybe in the horticulture industry, and also the quality of what they are taking in the market using our products, and also the, uh, the high 
the high production from those, uh, the technology from those seeds and also the chemicals we are uh, selling to farmers. So I want you to tell us, if a farmer comes today to your stand, yes. what are three things you want them to take away from you? Okay. Uh, one thing, uh, we want the farmer, when they come to our stand, eh, we want them to change because farmers, you see now, they have not been uh, uh, doing what is required so that to be able to produce the maximum. For one, they don't have the knowledge of maybe about the spacing, the fertilizers to use, the chemicals to use, uh, in order to be able to maximize on production. So we have now to give them uh, that information on, uh, we give them the, the agronomic practices uh, that is concerning how they can manage their crops and the seeds in order to produce the best and the, also the, the highest production and also the quality. Yeah. And at our stand, we are also giving them, we have on the ground, we have in all over Kenya, we have people we call field assistant and uh, uh, sales, uh, uh, sales agronomist who are now liaising with the farmers on the ground. We advise them for free of change regardless to be able to, when they buy our product, make sure that they follow instructions properly so that they get good yields and also high quality produce. The theme this year is yes. promoting innovation and trade in yes. agriculture. Yes. How are you contributing towards the theme? Okay, uh, what we are uh, contributing to this theme, eh, uh, especially on innovation, eh, we have brought some of the seeds, the high seeds we have brought from uh, maize, onions, cabbages. Those ones, when the, the farmers grow those ones, they are able to uplift their standards of living by selling those because of their high quality, they are producing well, and also when they take them to the market, because they are able now to fetch uh, good quality, uh, because of the quality they will be able to get high prices. Urban agriculture is playing a crucial role when it comes to food security in an era where spaces are becoming more and more limited as the years go by. Ruben Center in Mukuru Waben came to the show to challenge the notion that one can only farm in big spaces. Today we are we exhibiting uh, different techniques of farming which can be done in urban centers and we also have one which really works very well in arid and semi-arid areas. So we have uh, the top week irrigation which we advise people who probably are living in rented homes and they don't have big spaces to use it and doesn't need a lot of things. It only needs uh, some containers which are recycled, uh, the 10 liters uh, from oil, cooking oil. You need a waste pipe and a small tank and some wicks. A wick, uh, I know people ask what wicks are. A wick is, um, is a material, a felt material that can, can, uh, can suck water from a pipe, uh, taking it upwards depending on how you put it on the container. So and the other thing that you need is soil, manure and some browns. And the browns really help in the soil because it helps the soil not to compact. So when you plant your plants in these containers, the water can really seep in easily without problem. We also have another design which we call a container wick irrigation. And the containers are recycled water bottles. The water bottles, you just cut them into half, where you have one at the top and one at the bottom. The one at the bottom is the one that holds water for the top. And the top holds soil, which is mixed with manure and browns, and uh, the, 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 the seedlings that we are planting. So in, uh, at the center of the container that has soil, that is where we use a wick. And the wick that is there, we use the, mop, the, mopping, the mopping stick. You remove the, the, the hairs. They call, the local language, they call the hairs on the mop. That is what you use. Then what you do, you like uh, plate them together so that they become one. You can take like four strings of the mopper, then you, you braid them together, then they'll make one. Then that is what you use. That helps in the capillary action. The raising of the water from the, the, the half of the bottle that we cut. Remember we had two parts. So one part that holds water and then the other one gets through the, the soil on the one that will be planting our seedlings. And uh, then we have uh, another, another design also, which we call the drip irrigation whereby in our combined uh, capillary wick garden, 
and the drip irrigation. This is where you just put water in a plastic container and you have control on the water that goes to your, to your plant. So you just open the top of the bottle, which has a hole underneath, and the water comes out. When you tighten it, because of the capillary action, the water stops. So you're the one who's detecting the water that is enough for your plant. So you have control on it. So just tighten the lid and the water stops. For the wick, this is what I was saying. There is the wick in the half of the bottle. Remember, this is one bottle cut it into two. So this is the wick, which we've used the, the mopper here. Then you fix it. When you look at it, one part is remaining in the container that holds water and one is inside the container that has soil, which we call the planting media. And now we have our plants on top of it. In our garden, when there is uh, the water, the drip irrigation, for instance, if the plant gets enough, uh, enough water and it has excess, the water drips down to a basin that we've put there. The basin that is there, we do plant uh, wheat grass. Wheat grass does not need a lot of sunlight. So when it is there, it looks like it's under a shade, but it's okay there, it will do very well. It needs a lot of shade. So the excess water goes to the, to the bowl that we planted the wheat grass, and then below, below that one, there's another one underneath, at the bottom. So the excess water goes there. Then under it, we have a flat plate which collects the excess water, which we can again recycle back to our, to our bottle then the system continues the same. Okay. So there's no excess water that goes to waste. Mm -hmm. So it's one way of saving water, uh, utilizing small spaces, uh, conserving the environment because you're recycling the bottles. Mm -hmm. And also it helps us in food security because it assures a family of fresh vegetables. For the wall hangings, for people who don't even have spaces in their balconies, they have walls which have built their houses. So there we do the drip irrigation. We have water with bottles on top, whereby you just open the same system, you open the bottle and the water comes out. So the bottles are arranged in a way that uh, they are about five bottles. So when the first one gets water and it gets excess, it drips down to the second one, to the third one, to the fourth one, and to the last one, which on the ground you can put some soil and another plastic container and plant. So water is not lost. And the plant gets what is enough because what is excess goes out and when it goes out, it is used in the next uh, container garden. Uh, we also have jeans, whereby we are saying there is nothing to be, to be thrown or to be burnt in this country. When old, you have old jeans, you can use it as a farm. And you can see they are really doing well. All you need is to have your old jeans, soil, manure, and browns, and some seedlings. Then you have your, uh, your gardens set, and you'll be harvesting. So that is another way. And we're also telling women in the kitchen, women really get angry when flasks break. Don't throw the, sh the, the shells, the plastic shells. They can also be used to plant uh, different fruits, like us, we've planted strawberries and they're doing well, uh, the, but you can also plant uh, different types of vegetables, like spinach, kills, you can also plant uh, coriander, and they do very well. So all we are saying is walls can be put into use, uh, small spaces can be put into use and materials can be recycled for the sake of our environment and will be secure when it comes to food security because we'll be able to provide our own food. Before we wrap up today's show, let's find out what the people who came to the show experienced and learned. Since I joined Form 1 in St. Francis, we are always coming for this show. It's very educative and uh, we learn a lot about agriculture, about farming and uh, the way we always think that farming is dirty work, we don't to associate ourselves with dirty work, we want white collar jobs. I guess by now I can do farming. It's really profitable and uh, it's fun, it's interesting. You know, some things you just, you don't, you just don't learn from from out there, you get into books, then you're wondering, ah, how, is this, how is this practical? Then when we come here every year, you get to learn, to see things that you've seen, not just in books, you get, uh, how will I say it, the picture. You know, you know re reading, reading in books, you just get confused, but now when, you, when we come here, you get to see, oh yeah, it's true, it, it's done like this. I when fish, that's it for today. Thank you so much for tuning in.